Praise the Lord. A blessed day to be in the house of the Lord. We celebrate Jesus died on the cross that we might have a right to worship him and praise him in this place today. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Let's all stand. We're going to read our scripture and then we will have our prayer. Our scripture this morning will be coming from the book of Luke, the 17th chapter. One day Jesus said to his disciples, there will always be temptations to sin, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting. It would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone hung around his, your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fail or to fall into sin. So watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, you must forgive. The apostle said unto the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. The Lord answered, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and thrown into the sea, and it would obey you. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the word. I'm sorry for the prayer. Amen. Psalms 121 says, I will look to the hills for which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And this is who we are here to serve today. Today, while it's still today, God has blessed us and kissed us with the life that he has given us. So let us bow our hearts and minds, prepare to serve him with an earnest heart. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this is the day that you have made. And Lord, we will rejoice and be glad in it. With the fruit of our lips, Lord, and the movement of our hands, we're going to serve you, Lord, in any way and every way that we can. So, Lord, as you have transformed us, renewed us, and gave us another day to show this dark world about your son, Lord, this world needs more love. We know that evil is trying to do what it does, but we know the end story. We know that there's glory. We know that there's victory. Lord, you are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are a preserver. And you even restore us. So, Lord, right now, we lift up those in hospital, nursing homes, street corners, those that are in prison in their hearts and minds, God. Lord, let those shackles be broken. Let the chains fall off. And let their ears and heart be ready to serve you, God. Because it's you that gives us life. It's you that gives us breath. It's you that we give our honor and glory to. So as we seek first your kingdom, God, today, seeking your kingdom, we woke up giving you praise. Throughout the day, we're going to give you praise. And even into the night hours, we give you praise. Lord... We know that with the killings that's going on, the souls that may have been lost, we don't know. But from Ukraine to New York, Lord, we know that you are still busy and working. Just as some of those probably were Christians, we don't know as to how many was what. But Lord, we're going to look to the hills for whence come of our help. You are the creator. We don't look to the creation. We look to you, God, for whence come of our help. Our help is coming from you, and that's where you want us to stand. To stand because you will not allow our feet to be slipped. You will give us the protection that we need. You will give us the strength we need to persevere. You will give us the wisdom and knowledge as we renew our minds and stay focused on you. So, Lord, as a man of God that you appointed to this house, come forth to bring a word. Let our hearts and minds be able to receive it, God, and use it to live 
as our daily bread, which is what you give us, God, and that is your word. Your word will go forth and live forever and ever and ever and ever. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, Father, because it is due to you. Right now, we give you the glory. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Now's the time where we can give to the work of the Lord, to the ministry of the gospel, the spread of the gospel throughout the land. Here at Grace Temple, there are three ways in which you can give. You can support your church. If you're here in person, the offering boxes are located in the rear of the worship center. If you want to give online, you can go to Grace Temple's website, gracetemplembc.com. Click on the link that says members and then the link for online giving. And we'll be able to connect you with your source of giving. Or you can mail your love offering in to Grace Temple Baptist Church, 1020 East 31st Street, Tucson, Arizona, 85713. Thank you for giving to the work of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has 
Praise the Lord. We are engaged in a battle, but the Lord has promised that he would never leave us, nor would he forsake us. And because of his mercy and his grace, we are here today. Only God. All right, you guys. Only God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think. I want to invite your attention this morning to the Old Testament book of Job. The Old Testament book of Job. And we're going to read the first five, six through 11. The Old Testament book of Job. If you're having trouble finding it, it's right after Psalms. Amen. If you can't find Psalms, use your index. Amen. Job chapter 1, beginning at verse number 6. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I've been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. You've put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Amen. You may be seated. Today, I want you to think about this thought. Faith under fire. Faith under fire. The book of Job is one of the oldest books, not just in the Old Testament, but in the entire Bible. No one is really certain who the author was or who wrote it, but it was commonly accepted by the Jews that this was one of the books that was inspired. The book tells us that Job was a good man, that he was one that hated sin and loved God, but it also shows us how we should respond to suffering. The question is, if you lose everything, Will you still worship God? Will you still praise God when the blessings cease? Will you still praise God when trials come, when the tests come, when people talk bad about you or set you up for failure? Will you still love God? Or do we love him because of what he can do for us? Or do we love him because of what he can give us? And it's sort of a transactional kind of arrangement that as long as you keep blessing me, I'll keep worshiping. As long as you keep making ways, I'll keep serving you. But the minute the blessings cease, so also cease my worship. That's what Job is testing us. That's what Job is showing us. Job is showing us that his love for God is unconditional. Job did not have the Bible like we have it. Job didn't know God like we should know him. He had only heard about God. But Job was a man that said, the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because my confidence is not in what I possess. My hope is not in what I can do. But my trust is in God. And I'm going to stick with God no matter how much it costs. Jesus said that we should count the cost whether we are willing to serve him even if it costs us everything. 
Now, I know this is hard for us to accept, brothers and sisters, but when you say, I'm a child of God, you declared war on the devil. You set yourself up for a battle. And part of the job of a pastor is to equip people to let them know that you don't just serve God when you can praise him, but you also serve him when you can't see what he's doing. You don't just serve God because of what he can give you, but you serve him because he's worthy, all by himself, without anything. Only Job was, I'm sorry, 10 of the disciples of Jesus died a natural death. Only 10. Judas hung himself, and John lived and died of old age. But just before you think that John escaped everything, they boiled him in oil. And then they put him on the Isle of Patmos where he worked as a slave until he was freed. It wasn't easy being a Christian. And sometimes living in America, we can get the thought that living a Christian life is easy. But I'll stop by to tell you this morning, it's not easy following Jesus. Because sometimes you're going to be tested. Sometimes you're going to be tried. Sometimes you're going to have to endure some hardships. So the first thing I want to share you with is, what kind of man was Job? Job was a man of integrity. What do you mean, brother pastor, he's a man of integrity? I mean that the Bible doesn't say that Job was sinless. Did y'all catch that? He wasn't perfect. Oh, (laughs) y'all looking at me like I read it in the Old Testament in the King James Version. It said perfect. But if you really look at the literal translation, it's better in the New Living Standard or the New Living Translation because it says he was blameless, which means that Job Job knew the law. He, He knew the requirements of God, and he prayed and asked God to forgive him whenever he went astray. How many of you know that God knows that all of us are going to go astray? Amen, amen. Don't, don't look at your neighbor and say, he talking about you. I'm talking about you too. Amen. All of us have gone astray. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And it's not whether you're going to sin, it's when you're going to sin. Y'all can get quiet if you want to. Amen. I'll let the people that, amen. We are all fallen in our nature. So when somebody says, you call yourself a saint, amen. Yes, I am. I don't call myself a saint. The Bible calls me a saint. Because how many of you know that a saint is simply a follower of Jesus Christ? So you can pat yourself on the back and say, I'm a saint. Because a saint is one who follows Jesus. How many of you know that I'm not, how many of you know that you're not saved because of how good you are? You're saved because of how good Jesus is. Do I have any testimonies in here today? That say, I'm not perfect, but I know that I know something, put my trust as someone who is perfect. Amen. Job was not sinless. So God, you, but God used Job to show us how to handle adversity. Do I still have some people? Job used us to encourage us when we go through some things. Do I have anybody that's been through anything in here? Amen. Anybody that's ever had a struggle and you didn't know how you were going to make it and it was because God brought you through that you were able to make it and you know it wasn't anybody but the Lord because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would not be where you are right now. But because God is gracious and he would not let you suffer beyond measure, he brought you out of the trial and when you came out, you were better than when you went in. I got some people in here that can testify to that. So so here's our example of how to handle adversity. Job had more cattle, more camels, more land, prosperous land than all of his neighbors. And one day, the devil went to God like all the other angels. And God said, where have you been? And the devil said, can I give you all the Grady translation? I was looking at your people, <laughs> the people that you said was created in your image. <laughs> you know, they some messed up folk. I, yeah, this is the Scott translation. Please don't try to go to the store and buy it. Amen. I have not put it, published it yet. But, but man, <laughs> that's the best God that you could do is these people. And God said, have you seen Job? 
God say, yeah, or the devil say, yeah, I seen Job, but look what you did for him. You got him all protected. I bet you if you take away that head, he'll curse you to your face. And God said, he's in your hands. Oh, that's good, isn't it? First thing, this is really important. Notice God did not touch Job. Where are my amens? Over here. God did not lay a hand on Job. What God did was remove the hedge and allow Satan access to Job. Somebody in here ought to shout right now when I tell you that God has a hedge around your life and he cannot, the devil can't get into there unless God says it's all right. Amen, amen, amen. amen. See, Job was a perfect man, a good man, and, 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 and in, this, in a day, he lost his family, he lost his wealth, and shortly thereafter lost his health. And then Job's three friends showed up. How many of you know sometimes it's better to suffer by yourself than to suffer with some people that can only do nothing but talk bad about how bad you are? Now, let me share something with y'all. See, they didn't say, Job, they, they didn't say, Job, we came to comfort you. They said, Job, what did you do to make God do, allow this to happen in your life? Can I share something with you? God does not only allow trials to people that need correcting. Sometimes God allows trials in your life because he wants to use you as an example of how to overcome and how to be a strong believer. Sometimes God wants to say to you, can I borrow you for a few days and let you go through something so that somebody that's going through the same thing might learn from your situation and give God the praise because God brought you out and he will bring them out also. Did, y'all, did I go too fast? Did I catch anybody there? Amen. Job was a man of integrity. He was a good man, but it, he lost everything. So much so, Deacon Moore, that his wife came to him after he had boils from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, and Job was using pieces of, of, uh, of uh, pottery to scrape the spoil, the boils, and his wife came to him, and she said, why don't you curse God and die? Now, you know, <laughs> why don't, now it's bad enough that she wanted him to curse God. And to die. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Job. (laughs) Brothers, when your wife says, die, she has not, like Job said, you talk like one of the foolish women. But did you hear what Job said? Job said that we've received good from God. Shall we not be also thankful for the bad? Brothers and sisters, the reality is in life, you're going to have some good days and you're going to have some bad days. In life, you're going to have some times to praise the Lord and sometimes you're going to have to say, Lord, where are you? You're going to have some times when you can run and jump and praise the Lord in church and other times you're going to sit there with a crying look in your face because trials have come your way. But I'll share something with you in the little time that I've been here on the earth. My good days outweigh my bad days, and I'm going to keep on praising him. Now, I told you all about Job. Now, can I give you all some good news? Satan needed permission to talk to Job. Did you all catch that? Notice Satan needed permission to test God. God placed limits on Job's test. Oh, y'all stay here for a second. Job, you can touch him, but you can't take his life. Take all that he has, but you can't touch him. Well, God, I took all that he had, and he still kept praising you. But I tell you what, skin for skin, touch his body, and he'll curse you to your face. He's in your hand. Why did God allow Job to be tested? Why did God allow Job to lose everything that he had? Why did God allow Job to even lose his health? Because God knew Job. God knew that no matter what the devil did to Job, that Job was going to keep on praising him. 
The devil knew, the God knew that as much as the devil was laying on Job, Job was not going to buckle under it because he knew that Job had something down on the inside of him that was going to keep him in the middle of the storm. And I'm saying to somebody in here right now, never feel like God has put more on you than you can handle because God knows exactly what you can handle. And the devil can't do any more to you than God will allow. And if God allows it, there's a blessing on the other side of it. Well, somebody need to hear what I just said. If God allows it to come to you, there's a benefit when it gets to you. Joe, brothers and sisters, God God placed a limit on his authority. I know sometimes we think the devil is all powerful, but the truth is he doesn't have all the power. In fact, the devil doesn't have as much power as God. If I ask people today, what's the opposite of God? Some people would say the devil, but the devil is not God's opposite because the devil is not God's equal. Can I say that again? The devil and God are not on the same level because God made the devil. So if God made the devil, the devil can't be as powerful as God. So the devil has to come and get permission. Now I'm talking about y'all. The devil has to come and get permission from God to allow the test to come into your life. And when God allows a test to come into your life, he's simply making sure that you are prepared for everything else that comes your way. What I'm trying to share with you, brothers and sisters, is even though you may be going through something, it first had to get permission from God. Can I use an illustration? If God is in the middle and you're on my right side and tribulation is on your left side, it has to come through God to get to you. I tried to do it so y'all can see it. I'm trying to get y'all to see that if God allows it to come to you, he knows what's coming to you and he knows how to handle it. I need to share this with y'all. We were on our way to... Tucson from Texas. And when I say, brother preachers, that we were in a storm, we were in a storm. I mean, it was so, the turbulence was so bad that people were beginning to scream. They were beginning to get unnerved. And my wife, she said, I'm scared. And I replied, I'm scared too. I can't fly this plane. This plane was, it was going, it was, the turbulence was so bad, the engines were speeding up and slowing down. And I mean, it was rocking from back to forth and up and down. Amen. The light came on. Please fasten your seatbelt like y'all didn't know you already had that on. Amen. It, I mean, it was bad. People were screaming. The pilot came over the radio or with an uh, intercom. And he said, and I'm going to give y'all just like he said it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing extreme turbulence. I know some of y'all are uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? I, I know some of you are uncomfortable. But please understand, we've been through worse. The plane can handle much worse than what we're going through. And I've already contacted air traffic control and gotten clearance to go to another level. And it should smooth out after a while. Am I telling it exactly like he said it? I'm not telling you all the story, brothers and sisters. We were all scared. But the pilot knew that what the plane could handle was more than what we were going through at the moment. But not only did the pilot know what the plane could handle, he had already been through worse. And what he was saying is, if you give me a chance, I'm going to get you out of this mess. And I'm saying to somebody in here right now, no matter how bad it looks right now, you can handle a whole lot more than what's come into your life. And God has already gotten permission to get you out of here. Just hold on. You will get through it. You will get through it. Your faith might be under fire right now, but amen, pretty soon God is going to throw some water on that fire, and he's going to put the fire out, and you'll know that God is able to do all things. God already knew, oh, this is good. Not only did God know Job, he already knew the outcome. 
y'all catch that? God knew that Job was going to get through it. But not only did God know Job was going to get through it, he saw Job on the other side of it. Oh, somebody catch what I'm saying. Because, see, there's tribulation on this side, and the only way to get to the other side is to go through the tribulation. But in order to get to the other side, you've got to go through some bad times. But the good news is, if you keep moving, you'll make it to the other side. And on the other side, you'll be able to rejoice. Let me see if I get some help from the children of Israel as they're getting ready to go over into the promised land. Amen. Jordan River at, at, at flood stage. And, 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 and Joshua getting ready to take the children of Israel over to the other side. How many of you know that sometimes when you're getting ready to be blessed, the turbulent water will show up in your life? Do I have any witnesses? Amen. When you're getting ready to be moved to a new level, something will be in your way to keep you from making it to the next level. And sometimes you've got to go through what you've got to go through in order to get the blessing that God has for you. Sometimes you got to go through it. Amen. Sometimes you got to go through it. The, the river at flood stage, and God told Joshua, he said, tell the priest, first off, tell the men to go gather 12 stones and stick them in the water. Stick them in the water? What are we trying to do? Joshua, I want you to remember that even though we were at a bad time, God delivered you. (laughs) Even though you didn't know how you were going to make it, God delivered you. And sometimes your children are going to say, what do these stones mean? And you're going to tell them, this is when God delivered us. And here's why I'm sharing that part of the story with you. Because when God brings you through something, don't forget it was God that brought you through. And when people ask you how you made it, you let them know that it was God that gave you the strength to get through it. It was not your intellect. It was not your education. It was not your money. It was not your friends. It was not your family. It wasn't even your church. It was not your pastor. It wasn't deacons praying for you. It was because God delivered you out of it all by himself. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we got to go through some things to get to the other side. And on the other side, that's where we find joy. On the other side, that's where we find peace. Job encourages us today because Job trusted God even when he couldn't see him. And I want to share with you this morning, brothers and sisters, God is under no obligation to tell you what he's doing in your life. Somebody should say amen right there. God don't have to ask your permission in order to do something in your life. God doesn't have to get your approval to take somebody out of your life that needs to be removed. God does not have to take you off of a job that you should have left long time ago in order for him to bless you. God does not have to tell you that they're turning your house, your apartment into a condo so that you'll use that money you've been saving to buy the house that God wanted for you because God has been telling you all along, this is not what I have for you. I got better for you, but you settle for less and God is saying, if you're going to settle for less, I'm going to take the less away so I can give you the blessing that I have for you. Sometimes God has got to brothers and sisters snatch things out of your hand that you got held on to so tight. And God is saying, if you would just let that go, I've got more for you. This kid had a dollar in his hand and the man said, what's that in your hand? He said, it's a dollar. And the boy, he said, give me the dollar. And the boy said, it's the only dollar I got. He said, please, give me the dollar. The boy said, you don't understand. This is the only dollar I have. I'm hungry. This dollar is going to buy me some food. And the man said, if you give me that dollar, I'll give you 10. And that's what God is saying to somebody in here right now. If you would let go of that which you think you have to have, I've got something better for you. And it's waiting for you. All you've got to do is release what I've been telling you to get rid of. And so I can give you even better. 
Job trusted God. How do you know that when you trust God, he will not fail you? When you trust God, he will not let you down. When you trust God, he will be with you all the way. Don't you love children? <laughs> Don't you love children? Let me tell you why I love children. They trust you. They trust you. If you tell a child that's hanging somewhere on a ledge and, and they don't know how their feet don't touch the ground and you tell them I'm underneath of you, let go and I'll catch you. A child will let go. Billy Graham told this story of a man that was on a cliff and his foot slipped and he got stuck on the cliff and there was nobody around. And so he cried out. He said, if there's anybody up there, will you please get me down? And with the moments, a voice came back, let go. And the man said, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> he didn't trust the voice. Children have a way of trusting us because they know how much we love them. When we cook food for them, they don't ask how was it made, they trust you. When you tell them something, they trust you. But as we get older, our trust begins to be tested. And we don't believe people like we used to. And so now we ask why. But I share this with you. If you trust God, and God says something in his word, God will move heaven and earth to keep his word. And if God said it, he will bring it to pass. If God said it, he will accomplish it. If God said it, you can take it to the bank because God has already stood by his word. Job's friend said, Job, you must have done something wrong in order for God to do all of this for you to you. And Job said, I've done nothing wrong. I don't understand it, but I haven't done anything wrong. How many of you know that sometimes your friends can turn into enemies while they steal your friends? Because they begin to tell you something about God that they don't know themselves. How many of you know sometimes friends can tell you things that will tell you to go in the wrong direction even though they mean you well? But here's the truth, brother. If God told me to go this way, I don't care how many of y'all tell me to go the other way. I'm going this way because I'm following him even when I can't see what he's saying I'm still trusting him if God were to tell me I want you to go right now and walk through that wall I'm gonna start walking pastor why are you gonna start walking because I know one of two things either God is gonna change that wall or God is gonna change me but if God said go through the wall I'm going through the wall Job's friends caused him trouble Amen. And they talked with him for 35 chapters. Amen. 35 chapters. They're saying, Job, you had to do something wrong. Job, you must have done this. Job. And Job was beginning to start feeling the effects of their conversation. I need to share this with you sometimes. Your friends can pull you down to the place where you start doubting yourself whether what you know about God is true. But I got to share this with you. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your integrity. The same God that was is the same God that is and the same God that always will be. It might not appear right now, but just keep on trusting him because God knows exactly what he is doing. Brothers and sisters, Job shows us that God never allows us to be tested beyond our measure. And that'd be enough. I could tell y'all, amen, go home, read the book of Job. But I got to share with you how the story ends. I got to tell you how the story ends. You see, Job lost everything. Job lost his family. Job lost his wealth. And Job lost his health. But brothers and sisters, God will never leave you in a condition of loss. God did something for Job in the end of his life that made it better than it was in the beginning. And I'm telling somebody in here right now, you might have tears in your eyes today, but God will put a smile on your face tomorrow. 
You might have a zero balance in your bank account today. But if you keep on trusting God and you keep on doing his will, that God will make your negative into an overflow. I'm telling somebody in here right now, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It might look bad right now, but if you hold on and you hold out, joy is on the way. I'm telling somebody in here right now, they may talk bad about you. They might be laughing at you. They might say, where is your God now? But if you hold on and you hold out, God will put a praise in your lips, joy in your heart, running in your feet, and joy in your soul. Just hold on, hold on, hold on pretty soon. You'll be able to praise him. Pretty soon, you'll be able to lift your hands. Pretty soon, you'll be able to say, God is a good God. How do you know, brother pastor? Because I got some people in the room right now. You've been through the storm. You've been through the rain. You've had some bad days. You've had some heartaches. You've lost some things. But you sit in church on a Sunday morning and say, I might have been down, but look at me now because he's lifted me up. He's lifted me up. He gave me more than I had. Gave me all that I lost and more. Don't sleep on your praise. Don't sleep on your praise. Somebody sitting next to you got tears in their eye because of what they're going through. And you know what they're going through is only for a season. That's why you ought to say, I know, baby, what you're going through, but I know God is able. I know God is good. I know God will bring you through. I know he will lift you up. Your faith is under fire. Somebody might say, brother pastor, brother pastor, why does God allow trials in our lives? Before I was a pastor, I used to design test equipment. And one of those test, one of those instruments was a kidney machine, an artificial kidney machine. It was state-of-the-art technology, Rem Penn. During that time, kidney machines used to use reverse osmosis, and it would clean the blood by pulling it out, the impurities out of the blood, but we used negative pressure. And this would actually pull the impurities out, and it was saving lives. Wife can tell me, she actually tell you she actually saw one. But before those machines left the building, we put them through something just below boiling water. And it had to be just below boiling water going through that machine for an hour and a half. And if that machine failed, we replaced what failed and started over. That machine had to go through that what we call clean cycle for an hour and a half with boiling water running through. And every piece of that electronics powered up. Every piece had to work. And I thought about that a few minutes ago. Sometimes God has got to let you go through the heat so that when you're really needed, you can be counted on. God has got to let you go through it so that somebody's life that depends on you will be able to say thank you because you've already been through the fire. I don't know why God allowed the trial in your life, but I do know this. He never allows a trial without a purpose. If he brought it to you, there's a purpose in it and a blessing on the other side of it. I'm going to ask you all to stand. Brothers and sisters, your faith under fire is a good thing. It's a blessing to have your faith tested. Dr. Caesar Clark said, a faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. 
put your confidence in something that could actually fail you when you really need it, you need to have your faith, yes, even under fire. Listen, the worst thing that can happen to you is not that you go through a trial. It's not that you even fail the test. The worst thing that can happen to you is not that you have to endure suffering, but that you have to endure suffering for eternity. That you die in your sin and go to hell. That's the worst thing that can happen to you because hell is a terrible place. There's no escape. Don't be that person that turns their back on the Lord who's saying, come just like you are. Somebody say, Pastor, I can't come because I'm not clean enough. You'll never get clean enough. Come just like you are. This was years ago, but I had a man say, Pastor, I can't join church right now because I smoke marijuana. I told him, just don't smoke it in here and come on. And he gave his life to the Lord and is now still serving him. He's not here in Tucson, so don't ask me after church, who was it? He moved out of the state. But God is more concerned about your soul than he is about your sin. If you come to him, no matter how bad it's been, he'll save you. Now, after you've given your life to Christ, if you've already done that, that's great. If you did it today, please let me know. After you give your life to Christ, and here's how simple, Lord, save me. That's all you got to do. It doesn't get any easier than that. Lord, save me. You got to go through no long prayer. Just say, save me. And he will. When he does that, you need a church. And Grace Temple is a great church you won't find a better church to be a part of than this church right here. And right now, here's what I'm going to tell you what to do. If you're in this service, catch me afterward. I always hang around. Catch me after church. Say, Pastor, I want to be a part of Grace Temple. And we will connect you. We'll set you up right then. Or if you're watching us by the Internet, really doesn't matter what, what day you watch it, whether it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, Go to the website, gracetemplenbc.com. There's a link that says connect with grace. There's a pull-down window that says to join. Fill out that form, and we'll tell you, we'll get in touch with you. If you don't want to do that, just call the church, 520-622-8126, and say, I want to be a part of the Grace Temple family, and we will connect you. Tell anybody you want to join, answers the phone. If nobody answers the phone, leave a message. We'll get back in touch with you because we want you to be connected to the people of God. Will you do that? Let's pray. Father, thank you that even when we are tested, we will come forth as pure gold. We are not immune from suffering, but we thank you that in our suffering, you always have a purpose. We got to go back out into this world now, filled with violence, wickedness, evil on every hand. But we know that your angels are watching over us, protecting us and keeping us. Be with us now as we go through this week. We don't know what we'll face, but we can face anything with you. We thank you. We praise you. We give you the glory because it all belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God is good. He's watched over us. He's going to keep us the rest of the week. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And God's people said, Amen. God bless you, Grace Temple. God bless you, family and friends, and we'll see you here next week.